Alright, today we're going to be going over an ILS landing in the 16. Uh, so in order to do that, we need an ILS to frequency to tune to. So if we, we click on Cobaletti here, which is the airport we're going to land on. We can see that runway 7 has an ILS frequency of 111.5. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is not all runways in DCS have a ILS frequency. But what I'm doing now is I'm taking a heading of the runway because the runway numbers are basically rounded to where uh, roughly uh, a whole number is for the runway heading. So we can see that magnetic heading is 064. So we're gonna, what we're going to do is go into our ILS settings, which if we go to the ICP and press 1, we'll bring in up the ILS TACAN DED page. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter in 11150 for our ILS heading. And we hit enter here. We'll hear some beeping and we this uh, CMD STRG will highlight signaling that we have a good frequency. And then what we're going to do here is put in 064 for course setting. Six four. Yep, six four. Alright, so we've got that set. We're going to return back and what we're gonna do is go to this HSI here and move press the M, the mode button right here at the bottom. Switch us to PLS nav. You'll see right up here I uncaged the guidance glide slope and the horizontal brackets here we can see that we've got a horizontal bracket there so what we're going to do is we're going to lower speed get turned around so we're facing the runway and what we're going to do is basically try to center the the two lines the vertical and the horizontal line on the flight path marker to fly us to the runway So once I get turned around here, going roughly the heading, I'm going to do here is look at the HSI and fly off course of the heading to bring myself into the proper course. You'll see as I'm flying further past where the heading actually is, that course line is going to start coming back over. There it's coming over, so I'm going to turn hard to around 064. Probably go a little bit past 064 just to make sure I bring myself on heading. And you can see now that it's slightly off, but the left and right indicator there on my flight path marker is fairly straight on. as I bring it to the left a little bit, it's going to center itself even more. Uh, one of the things you need to be careful on when doing ILS landings is you don't uh, aggressively chase after these two, the two needles. If you do so, what you're going to end up doing is overcorrecting, overcorrecting the entire way in. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of going left or right based on the course heading that I know that we need. And we can see here I just intercepted the flight slope and I am way too high. So what I'm going to do here is bring my nose down, dive down, and find that glide slope. Bring myself a little bit to the left as I'm starting to drift a little too far from the runway heading. Altitude. Altitude. I'm going to bring my speed brakes back to try to get myself to a landing speed as we're getting 10 miles from the runway. There's that glide slope. I'm going to bring my nose back up. Remember, it's, it's going to be roughly, it should be that two and a half degree glide slope that you're used to for straight in landings. So I'm going to bring myself over to the right to bring that vertical line back in alignment with the flight path marker. Bring my nose down a little bit to keep myself on the glide slope. Now that I'm below 300, I'll bring my gear down. And there 
finish that snow. Bring my nose to the left. So I've drifted too far. And it's it's always just just slight maneuvers to keep yourself in line with the needles. You don't want to go chasing after them and overcorrect. Um, otherwise, you're just going to be zigging and zagging hard back and forth towards the runway. making minor adjustments trying to keep myself on speed and as, as good of alignment as I can muster. It's a difficult thing to uh, really master. Alright, so I'm bringing back towards heading. Looks like the ATC did the classic thing of not wanting to talk to me or acknowledge me, so we're not going to have any runway lights. So we're, we're just going to fly this ILS. The, that beeping tone is a good sign as you over you get that as you overfly towards the end of the runway. It's basically an indicator that lets you know that you're getting close and you are doing a good job. Oh. Oof. Big turbulence there. You can start to see the runway over there. The blue lights are the taxi lights. Just slowly adjust until I get a good visual of the runway. There's another indicator that I'm on the right path. You can start to see the runway right there in front of us. Now that we have it visually, we're gonna just fly it like we would visually, not pay attention to the lines anymore. Keeping that two and a half degree glide slope right in and then flaring. And touchdown. And now the runway lights are on. All right. And that's all there is for the ILS landings. The biggest thing is just making sure you're tuned to the right frequency and that the airport that you're trying to land at actually has an ILS. And once you get those two settings, and it's just a matter of going to the HSI on the center between your knees and turning it on. And they're just uh, making sure you don't overcorrect on the needles, chasing it to the runway.